Once again, our focus is on Texas, as so happens often in April when we get these deep digging Pacific systems coming through the Southern Rockies. There it is on the surface map. Some evidence of a surface low right there between El Paso and Chihuahua. Pressure data is not really reliable in that region, but we know that there's a low somewhere in that area. And the cold front, that pretty much tracks all the way from northwest of Fort Worth through Midland and down through the Baja California region. In the wake of that, some very cool air. You can see that temperatures at Nogales, Arizona, still in the 50s, and Phoenix at this hour, only 70 degrees. It is warming up a little bit, a little bit warmer than yesterday. And we will see those temperatures climb up very rapidly by the weekend. Out there in Texas, moisture is flowing northward. We have widespread 60s dew points, and those 60s actually go as far north as the Midwest and pretty much up to Ohio. That region there, seeing some very warm conditions. Washington, D.C., 87 degrees right now, 82 at uh, the Harrisburg area. They're expecting to be near record highs for today and for tonight. We should see some of the record high minimums overnight being in close contention. Up to the north, we do have a Canadian front sagging to the south right there through Manitoba, Saskatchewan. Temperatures almost down to freezing. And then a quick check up there in the Hudson Bay region. Yeah, there is plenty of cold air, but that's not going to be coming south as much since we're getting late in the season. And yeah, it looks like the sub-zero conditions are pretty much gone. In fact, 45 there at Southern Baffin Island, that's some very warm conditions. A quick check of things there in Europe. They've got plenty of cold weather too, especially around the British Isles, lots of 40s at this hour. And this is early evening conditions around 6 p.m. local today. So that's certainly cold, and they've got the wind to go with that. That air is originating from the northern Atlantic, north of Iceland, and out there around the Norwegian Sea and the North Sea itself. Quickly checking in on our mid-level dynamics, we've got quite a low pressure system there in southwestern New Mexico. Certainly an indication of a channel jet that's going to be along the boundary between that heightened positive vorticity up to the north and the negative vorticity being suggested by the gray colors on the south side. And that places the jet itself, or at least the axis of that, right through that region there. That's how it's looking at that hour. So the stronger flow, the height falls, starting to enter West Texas. And looks like a pretty good chunk of energy poised back there in the northwest Mexican mountains due to come out into the western parts of Texas over the next 12 hours. And up to the north, we can see a northern stream. That's separate. And there's the southern stream. So this is what we call a split flow pattern. And as we go forward, you're going to see the dynamics roll out into Texas. There it goes right there, the cutoff flow out there in west Texas, just kind of hanging back. And then you can see a large high developing across California. Conditions will be hot there this weekend, and that heat will spread into the Rockies this weekend. So quite a lot to look at here on the visible satellite imagery. We can break this up into different regimes. That's the best way to analyze imagery like this. Out to the west, we can see highly sheared mid and upper level clouds right there. They're being sheared towards the northeast. We know that that strong upper level flow is in that area. And of course, the upper level low itself further back towards the west across southwestern New Mexico. We've got this band right here. That's going to be hot tropical flow, not necessarily dry. That's going to be dew points in the 50s and 60s. The actual dry tropical flow is going to be found more in this area here, just south of Del Rio towards Monterey. Then we've got the moist tropical flow that's out here. The moisture is quite a bit deeper and that's supporting the development of this stratocumulus and low altocumulus layers. 
Then up to the north, we got a couple boundaries right there. That's going to be some convection. That's been going on most of the night. That's probably the leading edge of that cold front. And that extends somewhere down to the south, maybe something like that right there. And this here appears to be maybe a dry line from about Ozona, Sonora, south towards Langtree, Texas, which is down in that region. And as far as this region, it looks like that moisture, that cumulus is bumping up against a cap, whereas here we have more of a deep boundary layer supporting quite a bit of mixing. We can compare that on the high resolution rapid refresh. We'll set a sounding deep in East Texas. We can see the boundary layer goes all the way up to about eight or 9,000 feet. That's quite deep. So beneath that, it's tropical. The cumulus just can't really get above that lid right there. And then down towards the area south of San Antonio, that's what I refer to as the hot tropical air. A little bit more shallow, only up to about 6,000 feet. And you can see that capping right there. The radar is an integral part of the mesoanalysis. We do have a strong thunderstorm there north of San Angelo. However, we don't really see the boundaries. One thing you can do is you can run the animation back to see if it was previously in clear air mode. It has not been in clear air mode. So we can switch over to the spectrum width. Sometimes boundaries show up on that. We don't see that here. Got to keep in mind the radar site located right there. And the base velocity, sometimes it'll show up there. You'll get a different regime of wind flow in one area and different in another. And we don't see any issues there. So this radar is really not helping us very much. So we're going to go down towards San Angelo. And here we do see a boundary. See, sometimes you have to really zoom in. Notice that right there? That's something you're, you're going to put on your surface analysis. And if we go over to base velocity, we do see the transformation in the velocity. Here we have a lot of outbounds. So the flow is running roughly like that from the radar. And to the north, we have inbounds. So that's painting out the northerly flow, the cool conditions north of that tail end of the cold front. And then further closer to that storm, we can see some of the circulations. And it looks like that storm already has a mesocyclone within it. So we're looking at about 24 out and 38 in. It's about 50 or 60 knots of rotation, but it is pretty broad, looking at about three miles across that diameter. So that's going to be right in that little bear's cage structure. And then the spectrum width, can't really pick it out there very well, but sometimes it shows up, sometimes it doesn't. The spectrum width does seem to be picking up maybe some of the oscillations in the power lines there. These are all power lines that are making these various patterns. And in some areas, it looks like we have maybe the wind farms also showing up in the radar data. Check in Midland to see if that boundary carries over to the west. We do have the elevated storms in that region. You can see they're highly sheared. Base velocity showing mostly westerly flow. But it looks like maybe there is something right in there. And that could even, yeah, it looks like a very slight change in the velocity field through that region. And of course, no radars down to the south, so no help there. But looking at Del Rio, it looks like maybe this is picking up on some of the dry line activity. This is a popular region for supercells to develop west of Del Rio, especially in late March and April. Those tend to be prolific hailers, and they tend to move eastward during the early evening and produce swaths of hail into Del Rio, Uvalde, and the southern hill country. Not sure if that's what's going to happen today, but that's something I would be on guard for. And there's the base velocity. What does that tell you? East southeasterly flow working across that area, which tells us that there's probably some strong pressure falls out there in northern Mexico. 
kind of a complex picture here this afternoon on the surface chart, meso low, west of San Angelo. The polar front extending up towards Gainesville, and then we pick up some precip areas up to the north. You can see that down around Dallas, Waco, 85 over 68 for the most part. That's typical of late spring. Then we get into some of the thicker overcast around Stephenville and Austin, and then down to the south, some of the hot weather there around San Antonio. The dry line, that's extending south through Ozona to just west of Del Rio, and you can see those backed winds there at Del Rio, 93 over 68, with winds out of the east-northeast at 10 gusting to 20. Not too clear what's happening on the backside of that low. I'm thinking maybe the Canadian front comes about like that. The Pacific front a little bit further to the west. That's gradually moving in and out to the west. Certainly some very cool conditions out there. 64 at El Paso. They should normally be up near 75 to 80, 85 degrees. So that's cold weather blowing through that region, and looks also cold around Roswell, Carlsbad, and certainly in Albuquerque, where it's 49 with rain at this hour. So that does support the front being back in this region right here. SPC looking for an enhanced risk from Dallas to San Angelo down the dry line, and a slight risk further north along the northern part of that front. So what we see here, you know, this extends all the way up to 12Z. They're not looking for very much eastward progression, not even all the way to Waco, barely bringing that enhanced risk to the east. So that suggests a lot of parallel movement along the boundaries, and that could favor linear modes. Primary forcing boundaries, remnant outflow boundary from San Angelo to Mineral Wells. That's what we analyzed as that front. Risk of supercells, very large hail damaging winds, not particularly strong shear. Risk of a few tornadoes across the enhanced risk area. And of course, that will be where the winds are backed the furthest. Going back to the surface chart, the best backed winds appear to be in the Brownwood area. Also around Brady, winds are a little bit backed, so I might be inclined to kind of watch this area here, south and southeast of Abilene. Further south, the winds are not quite as backed, some southwesterly winds showing, and then all the way down towards Del Rio. Yeah, those winds are backed for sure, so there could be a local mezzolo in that area, and maybe a little bit enhanced SRHs for rotating storms. Tornadoes are not very common in that area, but, you know, looking at these winds here, I wouldn't put that entirely out of the question. The main problem they're going to have is these high temperature dew point spreads, which means high LCLs. So some of the better potential is going to be a little bit further to the north, where you can tap some of those higher RHs. There's our first watch box there from about Bridgeport down to San Angelo. And as I mentioned, probably some of the best potential down in this area. But of course, we have to watch the mesoscale trends, switch over to the HRRR. And this is really where the low level flow becomes pretty important. It appears that the flow will be consolidating around that meso low in the San Angelo area. The best backing found just to the east of there. So I would be looking at uh, certainly Brownwood, Santa Ana, Coleman, some of those places later this afternoon. And it looks like the flow kind of straightens out a little bit as that forcing moves on up the boundary. See, I can see a little bit of a trace of it moving to the northeast through there around 6 p.m. And down to the south, looks like things are dominated by this strong pressure fall out there near Del Rio. So that would be the other area I would be focusing in on later on. Now the flow as a whole does continue backing. You can see that by 9 p.m. they're pretty well backed, but we are losing the heating. And I think as more of those storms get going, that's going to consolidate that cold pool right there and result in more linear storms. Then it looks like overnight, just kind of disorganized storms gradually dissipating as we lose the heating. 
And for tomorrow, probably some storms down there along Interstate 35 along that inverted trough. SPC's day two for tomorrow. Not looking at any real problems, just a marginal risk from East Texas all the way up towards Maryland. And then the day three, Gulf Coast. Okay, so there we go. So let's go ahead and wrap that up and get it online and delivered to you. Hope you all have a great Wednesday evening, and we'll see you back for the Thursday edition tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.